That's when you run out of ammo. You are the ammo. I hate to do this, but it's the only way. Bit of frame drop here and there. We gotta do this, boys. It was nice knowing you like Fred Carbon. This is how it's gotta be. So what is going on guys, it's Dingo here and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Now I've taken a little bit of a hiatus from this game because I've been playing a lot of different FNAF games, uh, some little Friday Night Funkin' videos here and there, and um, honestly it's been quite a while. Um, I've been playing this game off camera, uh, on and off every now and again, and honestly it's been real good fun. Um, I haven't exactly done any crazy challenges or anything, however as you can see I have 9 flights in progress. Now I've started transporting Kerbals to the North Pole. Um, in the North Pole I now have three different aircraft and I also have a little buggy which has some solar panels on it, stuff like that, so I can travel the terrain and stuff. Nothing crazy, um, it's just so I can learn a bit more about having flights in progress and stuff like that and uh, learning about travelling on ground so I can get used to um, get used to different stuff like if I ever want to make a little base on the moon or anything, stuff like that. Um, I've heard there's some DLCs for this game which can help out with stuff like that, so I might actually buy the DLCs one day. Um, or I might just wait for Kerbal Space Program 2 to become a bit more stable and um, stuff like that, because I've heard the game is a little bit um, hard to run at the moment. Well, extremely hard to run, but I've heard that the, uh, the features are a bit buggy, stuff like that. It's not really the best game to play at the moment, so I'm going to wait for that a little bit. Now, since I don't have a plan for today's video, I just kind of wanted to show off some builds that I've started building and um, some cool ideas that I've just done. So, as you can see, I have quite a lot of aircraft here. Um, big missile, Chod, Goofy R car. This is the car we actually sent to the North Pole. Um, it's nothing crazy. It can hold three Kerbals. It's got a little uh, air intake here and a small jet engine. Now, um, usually when I use this on the ground, I'll set the limit to this to like 30%. Um, this is just so it isn't completely slow. It's just so it has like a tiny speed boost. Um, it can go around about 100 meters a second whilst it's still kind of stable. But the normal speed for this thing when I use the engine, I really want to be going about like, uh, I don't know, like 50 meters a second. That's quite a nice stable speed for this thing. But today's video, as you can see from the title, um, I need to start waffling because <laughs> I haven't actually showed what I wanted to show. I have built War Thunder. <laughs> I mean, not literally, but the vehicle I've built is um, mostly due to the fact that I play War Thunder quite a lot on the side. <laughs> I don't really record it much anymore because people don't really like watching the, uh, the War Thunder videos so much. They don't really do so well. So as you can see here, we have a plane called Bomber. <laughs> now... This plane took me a while to build. <laughs> As you can see from my earlier videos, me building a plane in general without anything cool added on to it is already a struggle. But this thing is quite unique actually. So, as you can see from the design, here we have two air-to-air -air missiles, or air-to-ground missiles. I guess they're kind of universal. They're obviously not going to be able to like lock onto stuff or anything like that. I don't know if that's possible in this game, and if it is, I'm definitely not skillful enough. But using some magicry from the um, scale mod, where you can change the size of things, in between this nose and the fuel tank, we have a nice little Mark II drone. Now, what this means is that we can switch from flying the plane to flying this little rocket. And when you mix the Kerbal Space Program scale mod with the mouse aim flight mod, it means that these little missiles that can be launched basically turn into Call of Duty cruise missiles. You're able to um, control these things with the mouse, and it is really damn cool. Um, I don't really, like I said, I don't really have a plan for today's video. I just kind of wanted to show off some cool builds because I find them quite interesting. Um, I'm sure for the professional Kerbal Space Program players out there, this is nothing, you know, they build way cooler things. But for me, I find this cool, so I felt like showing it off. Um, so these are the missiles. They can be launched separately. I've got everything staged. And I also found out from a really nice comment. I do not remember where the comment was. I'll probably try and find it for the video. I'll put it on screen if I can find it. Um, you're able to bind each individual thing, like the decouplers, engines, to different buttons using the actions group, which I never knew before. So I now have um, stuff set up with buttons, stuff like the afterburners and um, stuff like that. Uh, these on the bottom are not actually missiles. These are just dumb rockets. Um, when you launch them, they just fly straight forwards. Uh, they're very stable due to the little fins I've got on the side. They're not controllable fins, they're just there for uh, keep the thing straight, because I tried it without fins on the missile on the rockets, 
and they just did funny like three sixes everywhere. Other than the missiles and the rockets, there's actually one last surprise under here. So if we open all of these, we have a bomb, <laughs> big bomb. Now at first I was gonna make this like a missile kind of thing, just like the um the ones on the wings. Uh, I was gonna try and make like a big missile, and although it could work, it's a bit wonky and honestly I don't really feel like it was necessary. Now there are some things that I need to get rid of on my Kerbal Space Program um, sandbox map. Now I know I could get rid of them normally, <laughs> just you know remove them from the map, but since I've made this vehicle I might as well blow them up. So um, what better way to do that than by flying to them and shooting them with missiles. So I don't know if you guys saw the really goofy Ryanair video that I made not long ago. But in that video, we made a silly little plane, flew it to the other island, made fun of Ryanair a little bit. And that plane's still there on this world, so let's go and destroy it right now. Oh uh, yeah, guys, sorry about that long-ass intro, by the way. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff to explain. Let's get right into this. Normal flight, head and forward. Let's do this, boys. Three, two, one. You press two on the keyboard. We get our afterburners. There we go. Now, the problem is with Kerbal Space Program, it wasn't exactly designed for stuff like this. So, um... The missiles don't make the hugest explosion. Unless you hit directly on the target. So this might be... Not too easy to do. But I'm, I'm pretty sure we can pull it off. Alright, we are going to get rid of the bomb straight away. Because it's not exactly necessary. Um... Let's turn off our afterburners here. I'm pretty sure it's button 5. It is, okay. Thank god. I want to get that wrong. As you can see, it falls nice and nice and straight. It's more like a missile without the missile option. It's very damn. It goes pretty damn far. All right. Got everything set up here. Let's get this bad boy headed towards the island. Now we need this thing to fly very high up because even with SAS on, after I've launched the missile, this thing has to fly itself. And unfortunately, it veers to one side very severely, unless we get rid of both missiles and just use one, but that would kind of defeat the point of having two, wouldn't it? I want to turn on SAS now, actually. I need to make sure that this thing gets rid of the right decoupler first. Okay, it does. Okay, we're going to get into a nice high altitude before we launch this missile. As you can see, though, this plane, I mean, it flies really well. With the missiles and all the extra drag, this thing will struggle to get past, like, 400 meters a second, but... Um, once removing the missiles and all that, this thing will go extremely damn fast. Uh, probably around about a thousand meters a second, I'd say. Okay, boys. We're almost at the island. Now, I don't exactly know where the Ryanair plane is, but I remember from the last video, we kind of went over the runway. Which, I didn't actually do on purpose, but worked with the video, since we were trying to do a Ryanair landing. Alright, let's get this thing in SAS. Turn that off. Let's launch this missile. Now, we can actually start... We can start moving the missile before the boosters turn on. And this is just so that we um, get it in the right kind of um, position and first. Alright, we've got chase camera on. I do kind of want to activate the booster, but all right, let's do it. Let's get this bad boy on target. It really is just like a Call of Duty cruise missile, to be honest. Um, I guess having a locked camera would make more sense for that, but... Alright, let's find this plane. Oh my god, Ryanair is in target. Let's do this, boys. We must kill all the innocent civilians. No! Okay, we did, like, nothing to it. Let's switch back to our actual plane. Oh, crap. Wait a minute. Oh, no. <laughs> our, plane, our plane's just flying. Almost. A... <laughs> I don't know where it is. Okay, boys. It's our second attempt here. We need to teach Fry and Air a lesson. This is what they get for delaying my flight. <laughs> Ryanair's gonna pay. I wanted to go to Thailand for undisclosed reasons. And they delayed my flight. We're teaching them a lesson. I was meant to meet this really nice lady who was definitely a lady. Alright, um, first things first. We're not really gonna use the bomb, so let's get rid of this. Uh, got the five, there we go. Bye! Let's watch that thing land. That bad boy. Very nice. Funnily enough, the explosion on that is not that much bigger than the explosion from the little missiles. Um, as you can see, the little silver things on the side of the missiles, they just carry an extra fuel, which I thought would make the explosion much bigger, but kind of just didn't, unfortunately. Actually, no, I am actually going to get rid of the missiles, because we're not going to be using them anyway, so let's just do that. Pretty sure it's button four. There we go. 
Yeah, they still fly pretty straight, actually. Even without the um, without the boosters. Very nice. As you can see, this thing can go much, much quicker um, without their missiles. They're, they're the thing that slows the thing down the most. And the rockets probably slow it down a tiny bit, but it's nowhere near as bad. Alright, we're on our way down. Let's turn that off. Hit us with a bit of an air brake. I've realised as well, having the air brake on maximum deploy angle is kind of the stupid thing to do. I should really um, make it so they don't deploy all the way. I mean, on this plane it's fine, but on some planes it can make them do some wacky, some wacky turns and stuff. Alright, so I've got this set to button 6 on my keyboard, which is a little bit odd. But um, I use the rest of the buttons for other things, so... Alright. Now these things aren't going to go exactly where I point the plane, but I'm assuming they'll go close enough. Alright, there we go. Oh, we missed. Um, well, boys, to anyone out there who's plays Japan in War Thunder, you'll know one thing. Unless when you run out of ammo, you are the ammo. I hate to do this, but it's the only way. Bit of a frame drop here and there. we got to do this, boys. It was nice knowing you like Frid Carbon. This is how it's got to be. That works really well. Lagfred, you did a good job. You served your country proud. Somehow we have survivors from this plane, though. <laughs> Although I don't think it's going to be doing much anymore. And there it is. We have destroyed the Rhino. What is this other plane here? Oh, it's the Concorde. Very nice. This plane can stay there. Good plane. Anyway, boys and girls. Um, I didn't really have too much of a plan for today's video. I wanted to play that FNAF game, but um, I haven't touched Carbill in a while. So I just thought I'd show it off. Um... Honestly, I think that's about it. I don't really have much else to show. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If so, you know exactly what to do. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Most likely tomorrow where I'll be playing A Shadow Over Freddy's again. So make sure to stick around for that. Anyway guys, have a good one and stay safe.